there and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Georgina Davis and this is my first YouTube video. What I'm going to talk today about is working out and finding the motivation to work out during quarantine. I've managed to work out for 19 days consecutively and trust me that is really not normal for me. Usually I lose motivation after about a week or 10 days maximum. So I'm really proud of myself. I've managed to do the Gillian Michaels 30 day shred for 19 days. So here's what I'm doing differently to normal. So this might sound really contradictory to what most people would say, but my advice is to stay inside. Obviously that's a message you're hearing a lot at the moment with quarantine, it sort of ruined plans for everyone, everywhere and everything. But for me, I think staying inside just takes the pressure out of exercising. So let me explain. For example, if I'm going for a run, and I used to do a lot of running even a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I was still doing quite a lot of running. But what I would do is I'd maybe think about the run all day and it would play on my mind and I'd think, is now the time for the run? Do I feel like a run? And I'd just be really dragging my heels. And a lot of the time I'd get to the point in the end of the day where it was just too late to go. And I'd think, oh, well, this is too late. It's now dark, I can't go. And I'd have basically spent the whole day putting it off and then not doing it. And it's the same with gym classes. Whereas if you do workouts inside, there's just no excuse. You just can't miss it. You're in your own house. It can't be too dark. You're in your sitting room, the lights are on. The only thing is I live in a flat and we've got people above and below and so I do jump on the ceiling quite a lot. If you're in my position, just make sure you do it in fairly sociable hours. But even so, I've done ones about nine o'clock at night. It doesn't really bother me. I still don't think that's too late. They won't be asleep by then, so yeah. The next point is find a someone who will work out with you. Now again, this sounds really generic. Lots of people say, oh, find a workout buddy, blah -de blah but no, hear me out. So my boyfriend is quite lazy. I think he'd say it himself. He does not like exercising. So I knew that when I started doing Gillian Michaels, he was never going to want to do it with me. However, if you're lucky enough to have someone to work out with, whether it's your mom, your friend, your flatmate, great, I'm so happy for you, well done, that's great. But if you're like me and you're quarantining with someone who's a little bit lazy, what you can do is just ask them if they'll sit on the sofa with you for 25 minutes or whatever and they can be in the room while you're doing the workout and it's just really nice to have the company. I think it also is really helpful because it holds you accountable. They know you haven't worked out and my boyfriend doesn't really care, like he's so nice and he doesn't care that I don't look like a fitness model but still the fact I know he knows I haven't worked out puts me in the mood to work out. I just have an extra guilt on my conscience. And also there's lots of days when I don't need to work out with him. I find the motivation myself, but if there's a day when I'm just really struggling and I just can't find the motivation, I will say to him, please just sit on the sofa. I'll just do this workout 25 minutes and then we can watch something together. It also means they're invested in your fitness journey. So I'll tell him, if I've worked out while he was at work and that's really nice to be able to speak to someone about it and sort of track your progress and they say oh well done you can really see your abs coming in or that sort of thing so yeah as I say it does not have to be your boyfriend it can be your mum your friend your sister anyone brother dad whoever so number three Definitely you should find a routine you like and stick to it. I think on the internet it's really overwhelming sometimes. There's so much choice. I'm doing the Gillian Michaels program and it's called the 30 day shred. There's three different exercises you can do and it just takes the choice out of it for me. I think if I was trying to decide what workout to do every day, I'd be completely overwhelmed and I'd never get round to it. The fact that I know I'm doing the same thing every day, you're meant to do the three exercises, one for 10 days, the next for 10 days, and the third for 10 days. And because I know that's what I'm doing, it just takes the guesswork out for me. I know where I'm meant to be. I know what I'm meant to be doing and there's just no excuse. It doesn't have to be Gillian. Obviously you can find a different fitness vlogger, blogger, whatever, but I'd really recommend you find someone. Find someone you like, you don't find too annoying. I quite like Gillian Michaels because I listen to her podcast and I just think she's really funny. So I'd recommend sticking with her. She says some really ridiculous things in the video. She'll say things like, that's a false message of lethargy or, feel that it's pain leaving the body and you just think that Gillian that doesn't make sense but it's really good and it's quite fun 
So I'd recommend those. And also you can really see yourself improve if you're doing the same exercise for 10 days. You really do get better. You get stronger, you get fitter. You can tell from day one to day 10, it's a completely different experience. I've been doing three days of level three so far and day three already, I'm way better than I was. So you see your progress really, really fast. But yeah, that's what I'd recommend. Try and limit how many videos you watch. So whether you set up your own program or you just follow a DVD, we're spoilt for choice and it can be really overwhelming. So number four, that leads me on perfectly to if you are doing an exercise program for 10 days straight, you're going to get bored. You just will. It's so boring. <laughs> I know that's not the best advice, but it's just true. It's boring if you're doing the same thing for 10 days. So what I'd recommend is obviously you've chosen and I think having less choice is good, but with what you're listening to, you don't have to listen to Gillian or whoever it is every single time you work out. Change it up. I usually mute her and then I'll listen to a podcast or some music and sometimes the radio. I listened to Radio 2 the other day but I found Claudia Winkleman a bit annoying so that wasn't the best. But still it was good, it was nice to have some songs. I would definitely mix it up, listen to different things, it really really helps. Some podcasts I'd recommend, I personally really like listening to The High Low, I know I'm a basic bitch, like everyone likes The High Low, but yeah I'd recommend The High Low, How to Fail, if you've never listened to that before that's really good. You could even listen to the Gillian Michaels while you're doing Gillian Michaels, but it might be a bit meta but go for it. My next piece of advice is honestly something I do, it's do it in your pants. <laughs> it's not because I don't have exercise gear, I do have exercise gear, it is because if you do it in your pants, you will trick yourself into not thinking you're doing exercise. Your brain will think, I'm just at home, I'm in my pants, and then you pounce. It's really, really helpful. It means you don't faff about getting ready, you can just do it. If you get up, start the day in a sports bra and just a top, and obviously pyjama bottoms or whatever you're wearing in lockdown, and then when it comes time to do your exercise, just take off your pyjama bottoms and you're ready to go. So that's definitely one of my top tips and I sent my friend these clips the other day. This is probably something you've heard before but it's do it at the same time every day. So for me I've mostly been doing it at the same time every day. As I said before the joy of doing it at home means you can be more flexible so don't be too harsh on yourself but if you're already in a lockdown routine, for example I get up, I have breakfast, I usually watch a bit of YouTube and then I sort of have my day of work, then I do my workout, and then I have a shower, eat supper, go to bed. That's pretty much my routine at the moment. So if you can find a similar one, different people like to work out at different times, you don't have to do it in a particular order. I find it quite hard to wake up in the morning and then do it. I just think it's really, oh, my juices aren't flowing at that time in the day. <laughs> and it does take a little bit of time for me to get warmed up to the idea. I sort of have two slots, I either have the morning which is about 11 or 12 o'clock and then the evening which is any time between about 4 to 7. So those are my two slots and I don't stick to them completely, I sometimes will do it without those times but it just makes sense, like if you've got time there consistently every day then you know that that's when you'll be able to fit it in. This next one is about eating, so I'd really recommend you try and eat as well as possible. Don't change your diet drastically, that's not what I'm saying, don't cut out everything you were eating before, just make small changes here and there. Try and get an extra portion of fruit and veg in a day. Something I've been trying to do since probably about the new year is eat more fruit and veg. So I'm trying to eat about five portions of fruit and veg a day. I'm more than happy to go over that, it doesn't happen often. But I find that having made that resolution, I wasn't trying to cut down on anything, but I was trying to add something. I really think that helped. And it's meant that I've just eaten much more healthily. So I'd recommend you do something similar, maybe try and eat fish more than once a week or once a week if you don't already eat it once a week. That's another thing I did last summer me and my boyfriend were trying to be more healthy and we started eating fish, whereas before we never did really. I think we can get really obsessed with cutting down on crisps, cutting down on chocolate. Of course, that's great. If you binge them at the moment, don't binge them. But if you can, I think it's really worthwhile maybe just thinking about what you can add rather than what you can take away. And that takes me to my final point, which is chocolate. Obviously, it depends on your goals. It really does, but it depends on your goals. If you want to shred 
fat really quickly then obviously don't eat chocolate but for me I think I'm just at the moment trying to keep the motivation going which I assume you are too or you wouldn't be watching this video so if you're trying to keep the motivation going like me I'd recommend treating yourself just once a day it doesn't have to be big and it's something I can look forward to at the end of the day and that's it for today thanks very much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe thanks very much bye